Are you ready to learn to get rid of stress in your life? To learn how to deal with the emotional turmoil that causes strokes, heart attacks, bad health, and even weight gain? Life-changing habits for work, family, and everyone you deal with start here with Andrew Whitman. It's time to get warrior tough on WCCP 105.5 The Roar. Here's Andrew Whitman and Dutch Coleman. Andrew and Dutch, Tide and Tigers. Dutch and Andrew, Tigers and Tide. What's up, brother? What's happening? You, man, what a great, great football weekend for us, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. Moving right along. (laughs) We got more business to take care of, don't we? (laughs) Yeah, but we're moving right along. Hey, uh, one foot right in front of the other. Um, uh, Step by step, we're just moving along, doing what we do. Yeah, it was. Uh, there was some bad football played over the weekend. Oh, first off, let me ask you, how was your Thanksgiving weekend? It was good. It was good. I got to get down to Columbia, hang out with um, uh, some family and friends, um, and uh, getting to see the Tigers play, uh, getting some good food. You know, all those things together, good food and, and watching the Tigers play is always a good thing. So you guys had barbecued Gamecock, and we had barbecued war chicken. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. All right. So it was good. Yeah, we had a great Thanksgiving, too. I went down to see my family. We're all down. Um, we're actually down close to Auburn. We're down in LaGrange, Georgia, right on, on the border. And, yeah, there's a lot of, you know. Anyway, uh, it was good. Good, good. Yeah, except for the ba- – I mean, that Baylor-TCU game, I just couldn't even watch it. It was just – the weather was bad. It was bad football. Then there was the NFL games. There was a lot of bad football. Yeah. I can't abide it, man. You? Yeah, you know <sighs> – there's this there's this uh, perception about the NFL that it's all the great all everything, and I, but there is a lot of bad football played in the NFL. If you try and watch every game, there are particular teams, particular uh, matchups throughout an NFL weekend that do provide what we envision. But don't we have this image of the NFL like it's the all great and powerful NFL, like everything's all good? There's you know there's only bad football. At different levels of, uh, of of college, but in the NFL, it's all great. But we see these defensive struggles. We see this bad quarterback play in the NFL just as well. Uh, you know, and I got to tell you, man, I'm just like I'm over it. There's only and but you know what the NFL is like, and this is why I love sports because it's a microcosm of life. There are a few businesses out there. There's a few CEOs. There's a few good leaders and good managers that execute well, and then there's the average. So you have the elite warriors. There's a few of them, and then like less than I'm gonna say it's less than one percent or one five percent. I think it's less than five percent, but I mean, you looked at the numbers. But even in the NFL, and then, and then you just look at and it's just a clown show, man. It's just average-minded performance, and you wonder and you go, how did these guys even get here? Is this really? I mean, is the talent pool fished out? I mean, <laughs> I don't know, man. But it's there's just some bad, just bad execution. There's bad preparation, and it can't be talent. They wouldn't get there unless they did something to get on the I mean you have to have a certain level of physical skill to even get there. So I it it just it's mind blowing to me. I hate to see average performances. I hate to see mediocrity. I hate mediocrity in my own life. And that's what we do at Get Warrior Tough, man. We just try to, you know, eradicate mediocrity and and play at the highest level in life, play at the highest level that we can. You know, I I don't know what to what to attribute it to, but there's always been this drop off, especially in sports. From the best to average, that very good that very good group is very small as well. Yeah. Then there's this huge drop off to average. And if you look at the NFL, and, and when you think NFL quarterback, you think, oh man, that guy must be great. He has to be good, like as you suggested. He got there. But then when we watch with our own eyes, we'll see half the league starting quarterbacks are, are borderline bad. Right. We're not, and, and and we're not talking about just good. We're talking about when we look at them, they're bad. But what keeps us afloat, what keeps us alive, and what keeps us energized is the Tom Brady's of the world. When we see Aaron Rodgers at his peak, when we see a Cam Newton, we see these uh, these different quarterbacks that they, they give us hope that there there is this 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 unicorn at these positions when there's few and far between, actually. Yeah, and and, and I'll say, I mean, we say like, okay, so Aaron Rodgers, man, everybody was saying like. Five weeks ago, he's better than Tom Brady, and you know what, you're, dude, you're not making good passes. You're not making, you know. And even when I was watching the Patriots, I'm watching Tom Brady against the Jets. I can't even tell you how many times he just threw the ball in the dirt, so he didn't get hit again. You, you know, and you're just like, dude, really? But then 
they're winning. Or well, they were. Um, you know, they still win in their ten and one. And then you see Cam Newton. If you look at his numbers, he's not putting up any great stats as a quarterback, but he's making stuff happen. You know, which is kind of funny to me because Tebow used to get hit all the time that he didn't have great numbers. Um, but he could win games, and he won some playoff games. And now you see Cam Newton. He's not putting up great numbers as a quote-quote quarterback, but he is getting the job done. Yeah, I, I think that the, the difference with the Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, even a Cam Newton, is that, first of all, there's more than um, one way to skin a cat. With Tom Brady, he shows how delicate it is. And all his greatness, he's been able to hold it. He's been able to keep that organization together. And I'm going to give Belichick credit as well. Right. But out on out on that field – when you have this musical chairs of, of, of players coming through and not all at the highest level, you're not talking about frontline players on the offensive line, frontline players at receivers. Right. So I give Tom Brady, even though Belichick has created a system and managed a system that allowed those things to happen, I give Tom Brady as the on-field Belichick that's keeping those things together. And when you look at an Aaron Rodgers as a talent I think he's I think he he's a he's more has more talent than Tom Brady. Yeah, I think Brady but, would agree with that. Yeah, but but it lets you know how delicate it is and how it's not all about talent. There's a whole bunch of other factors involved. And even even when I go to to Cam Newton, Cam Newton shows that there's a combination of abilities that that can keep you in the league too. So Tom Brady is a superior thrower, couldn't run to save his life, but he's superior enough as a thrower, as a passer to be able to stay alive. Aaron Rodgers leans towards being a great passer, but not as great as Tom Brady. But his running ability keeps him in the conversation with Tom Brady. Now, Cam Newton has a combination of passing and running that may not put him at the level of those two completely, but it keeps him a level above enough above everyone else to help him win games because he can throw the ball. His lack of receiver talent is a challenge. But he's, you know, so there's different notches. So he's below those two, but he's just above the rest to keep him as a as a viable uh, entity in the NFL. Right, and so and I, and this I, this translates over into real life. You could take what, and so I, we have clients, Dutch, and they 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 see what they don't have, and they look at other people and they're like, well, I don't have that. And I don't, you got to take what the package is that you have and maximize what you have, and that's what I'm hearing you say about Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, uh, or or Cam Newton. The guys that are bad, they're not putting the time in. They're not putting. They're not maximizing. They haven't even figured out what their strengths are. Now I ask this all the time, it, you know, of clients. It, would you work on? Do you need to work on your strengths or your weaknesses? Like, and I'll say it like with my kids in school, right? If they came home and they all they're all science minded, they all get like A's in science and in math, and then they get a C in English. What do we tell them? What do most people tell their kids if they get a C in English? What do they need to work on? They need to work on English. Right. Why? They're not going to be the next great novelist. They're average in English. No one pays for average. Or like you said, if they do pay for average, they don't want to. Um, you know, if they didn't have the choice, they wouldn't pay for average. So this would be like, what, do we have Peyton Manning out there working on his tackling? That He's weak in tackling. Would we, would we have him out there practicing tackling drills? Right. No, right. that's not what his strength Same thing with Tom Brady, right? Same thing with any of these guys. So figure out what your strengths are, and you need to double down and triple down and work on your strengths because that's what people will pay for greatness in your strengths. Those things that you are wired to do, your strengths are where you need to work, not on your weaknesses. But see, the average-minded person thinks, oh, I need to work on my weaknesses. You know, I, we, we, talk, we talk, obviously, our, our focus is leadership, leadership development, uh, <laughs> preparing to be a leader, preparing to be great. You know, sometimes I question what these organizations are doing with these players, because as you suggested, you have your resources around you and you have to take your resources. You have to enact a plan that's going to make you successful. That's what Belichick's doing. He, he took the resources. He, he takes the resources he has and it changes weekly in his case. You see guys going down weekly. You see a guy going down during the game that's an offensive guard, and he right. moves him to tackle. Yeah, they had like 20 different combinations of offensive line. And then you, they got guys pulling up out of the practice squad, scoring two touchdowns. and stuff. I'm like, who's this guy? I mean, exactly. even like Lewis who went out, he was like their star guy. He was a throwaway. Exactly. So, so you have to, as an organization, you have to take what you have and you have to figure out how to best make it work for you. And sometimes I think these what they're putting together – First of all, the pieces don't fit, right. but then on top of that, they're not taking what they have and still making it fit. Right. Okay. So, so you then you take the okay. So we're talking about the 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 
the strengths of these quarterbacks, and not just the quarterbacks, but every player on the team, then now this goes right back to the coaching and the leadership of the organization. What, and what, love the Patriots, hate the Patriots, doesn't matter. But they have a single-minded vision. They have a single focus, and they don't have, you know, I, you know, Kraft isn't doing one thing and Kraft's son doing something else and Belichick doing something else and this part. No, they are single, single, single in their vision, in their focus, and they all pull together like the Clydesdale horses. And I see this in business all the time. We get into a boardroom and I'll even ask a company, what's your vision statement? You know, what's your mission? <laughs> They'll be like, what? And then they could give me whatever their mission statement was, and I'll say, what's that mean? And then one person will say, well, it means this. And another person, you know, the CEO will say, that, that, that's not what it means. You know, it means this. And then you got, even in the boardroom at the C level, we got people that can't even pull together because they haven't even sat down and figured out what's the ultimate target. Where, what is it that we're going for? You're right. And, that, and that's something that seems very simple. It seems very uh, straightforward, and it seems very elementary. But it's not because a lot of companies are failing and it starts there. It's just, uh, you know, and they have no matter how talented or untalented, quote, quote, your resources, your human resources are, your players are. Uh, we've seen guys like Belichick and even Pete Carroll. They'll take dudes out. I mean, Tom Brady was 199 in the draft. He was the last kid to get picked on the kickball team and, and arguably one of the greatest, you know, have results wise um, of it of all time it's just you know you it's an excuse to say well we don't have the right people or we don't have the right this and we don't have the right that i, I it's just an excuse so all right so what's the target does that help you making those excuses or hurt you i look at the browns man and that uh that mike pettit guy i'm just like in shock i mean he looks like he's just like in shock all the time you know on that monday night game he was just over there just looking like a deer in the headlights and it's and it's de it's definitely all about leadership because when I listen to a player say, "We don't have the right people," well, that's not their job. That's their job is not to get the right people. Their job is not to figure all that out. The player's job is to be ready to perform himself. So when you look at that, you say, "Okay, you have that dynamic." Then you have these coaches, or or we just say leadership in general, yeah. because it could be the GM, it could be the coach, it could be the president. They aren't taking what they have because if I Andrew, if I'm coming to you as a player. I need to be able to let you know that I have a plan in place for all these things around you. Because you may look around and go, if you're Tom Brady, you may look around and go, hey, who's that receiver? Right. Who's that lineman? I've never even heard of that guy. Where did he play ball at Glen Valley State or, or yeah. Mississippi Valley? You know, where, who are these people? But if, if Belichick has a plan that he explains to, Bel to, to Brady and the guys how it's, why and how it's going to work, then they're fine because their concern shouldn't be anything other than being – prepared themselves as individuals and in being able to do the job that they have to do. And so I, I put that onus on leadership to present a plan to the players, to the resources, to the cogs, moving forward, how it's going to work. Right. And they have to buy in. And this is what we see this in businesses all the time. They have, it, it, this is what really what we do uh, with CEO of you and then people whisper. The first thing is is ground zero leadership. You got to figure out yourself what it is that your target is. You know what if you're gonna, especially if you're in leadership, um, and then be able to push your airspace out. But you're right. They have to. They have to have confidence in their leadership that the leadership knows what they're doing or they have a plan. Hey, this is how it's going to work. And I mean, you could see that. I mean, just watch some mental toughness movies, right? Go watch Braveheart or The Patriot. Those those movies about you know. And there's you know, um, Mel Gibson giving the speech. You know, at Braveheart. And, and he has a vision and a plan. And he, you got to have people. I mean, people need that to buy in and to execute at their level. All right, man, we got we're up on a break. And then when we get back, um, I want to pick up on this, man, because it's just mediocrity drives me insane, dude. It just drives me insane.